yes the recording has started uh, so prince uh, would you like to pray today yes sir ma'am ah yeah, yeah go ahead thank you dear heavenly father thank you in this morning lot we come before you lot help us uh, as we are going to start this class lot holy spirit help us to understand better lot you give us uh, revelation and knowledge that we could understand well lot thank you i also pray for the student those who till dean joined lot i pray for them they also can connect it, uh, quickly lot thank you i pray your revelation is uh, come in our heart open our mind that we could receive new things from you lord thank you i submit all the session in your head in jesus name i pray amen amen men thank you thank you prince so we will uh, get into our uh, uh, topic for today we are at acts 15 so you know we saw how paul um, uh, barnabas they both finish the first missionary journey and they go back to antioch and we go back to antioch okay it's a congregation where there were leaders there were elders taking care of the congregation but still when they come back they find that there are people who have come in and who have brought some kind of a wrong teaching so that is where we were we saw that you know they were quite upset uh, about this wrong teaching there were men from judea who had come and the teaching which they brought about was that there is um a need for circumcision for a gentile believer uh, to be saved okay so what they did was they put the focus or the attention on a ritual and they told the believers that unless they participate in that unless they take that um, action you know their salvation is not complete so this matter when paul and barnabas heard it we are told in verse 2 that they quarreled okay so and it was a big quarrel because it says no small dissension and dispute with them so they argued so sometimes we might wonder why is it that paul and barnabas got so upset over this matter because it was affecting the very core of what we believe it is questioning the work of the cross you know apart from faith if we need works to be saved then what we are saying is the cross is not enough we are saying that jesus was not uh, you know completely man completely god so it is challenging uh, the very work of our god so no wonder paul and barnabas you know they had built up this church they had raised the church and uh, they had gone out on the journey but here they are coming back to find out that these men brought a strange teaching so you know you see their pastoral heart as well one of the responsibilities of the pastor is to take care of the sheep and uh, their spiritual walk with god now we may have built up our people but when we have built them up we have to also protect them okay uh, uh, not to say that you know we are going to be very um, cautious of anyone who comes in anyone who teaches see we can't protect them in that sense because if you take the world today there is so much of information available online and people can go wherever they want attend any conference so we can't stop our believers from receiving from other ministries but you know uh, equipping them really well in the truth of god's word is important because then they will be able to discern what is right and wrong in this case it seems like though they had equipped the believers um this particular strange teaching was affecting the believers so paul and barnabas had to take a call and decide what needs to be done so what they did is that you know they uh, uh decided to go to jerusalem because this was a very huge matter for them they did not want to leave it this way uh, and they knew that this particular doctrine you know which says that a believer must be circumcised a gentile believer must be circumcised okay uh, it will affect not just 
the church of antioch but if left unchecked it would affect all the believers across the regions because it was a serious matter okay so why do you think um the teaching of circumcision was being pushed by some of the men from judea it's possible that they were um uh, biased you know it was already difficult for the jews to accept that now gentiles are coming to know christ the jews they they were very proud of their own culture they were proud of their tradition you know they were proud of their godly life and they could not take it that it was so easy to become a child of god you know you believe in the lord jesus christ you repent you believe you give your life to christ and that's it now now you become a believer but here the jews for uh, uh, you know hundreds of years they have lived uh, an obedient life to the law and they could not take it that the gentiles can be saved so easily so it's possible that this teaching came out of that kind of a a, a, a bias or a, a a jealousy which they had for the gentiles who were being saved but of paul and barnabas they understood that uh, they are this teaching is really affecting the main truth of god's word which is salvation and that's why uh, you know they they took on these these jews and uh, they wanted to settle the matter now we also see that um, uh, you know paul and barnabas they take the matter to jerusalem knowing that uh, these men they have come from judea so obviously they are traveling around to spread this particular doctrine so they must have traveled around many places and i told you the, they did not want this doctrine to take over so paul and barnabas they go to jerusalem who is there in jerusalem the apostles and the elders remember we said the main uh, church the base church is jerusalem that actually sent out workers like barnabas to uh, the newer churches such as antioch so they go back to the base church to meet the apostles who are stationed there about this particular matter now even as they traveled you know you notice that um, there is a uh, the uh, ministry that paul and barnabas continued to do okay so they ministered to people along the way and they bless them and they continue on go to jerusalem and they report everything to the elders there in jerusalem so when they were reporting this to the elders in jerusalem uh, you find that there were some who had believed from the background of being pharisees and pharisees keep the law very strictly so they rose up and they said it is necessary to circumcise the gentiles okay because this was moses who had given it as a law he had given this command so why why should uh, you know you, we make it such a big issue why can't we just tell all the gentiles that uh, if they want to believe in jesus yeah it's fine let them believe but additionally let them also be circumcised so uh, when you know this this matter sort of came up um there was a little bit of commotion even among the elders and the leaders there okay so it was not like a clear cut um decision where paul and barnabas go and tell them look this is what is being taught and everyone says yeah it's wrong let's let's uh, 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 you know make sure we tear down this particular teaching it was not that simple there were some believers some elders over there they also said yeah what is wrong with the teaching circumcision of the gentiles should be fine okay so this matter uh was was a little more challenging to settle and that's what we see so when it was not getting settled among the people we know some of the leader figures in the church of jerusalem peter is one of them okay so peter stood up and he started sharing 
he talked about how god had taken the uh, taken him to share the gospel to the gentiles if you remember you know we said that uh, in acts chapter 10 how god gave peter a vision god gave cornelius a vision and he goes to cornelius's house over there he shares the gospel and even before he can lay hands on the family what happens the holy spirit is poured out okay the holy spirit is poured out on these people so that is what they have uh peter says look i have seen god touch the lives of gentiles and when the holy spirit did not make a distinction why is it that we are trying to put something additional and say okay for you to be saved like the jews you also must be circumcised okay so he was just trying to uh support what paul and barnabas were saying because what this they were saying was correct god did not put any additional you no know, peter says that uh, uh, why do you test god by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples you no know, yoke is like a burden putting a burden extra we are saying okay you also need to do this to be born again or you know we can have so many traditions in this case it is circumcision but today maybe i don't know we, people could be told that oh if you don't um uh, you know wear a certain kind of dress if you don't kneel in this way or if you don't fast for these many days then you can't be saved you have to do all those things also to be saved but we've seen in what jesus has done on the cross and what the bible tells us if you believe believe in your heart confess with your mouth the lord jesus you will be saved then that's about it so the work has been done by jesus and we receive it by faith and peter was trying to say why are you trying to put additional burden on the neck of the disciples he also said look our fathers we are not able to follow the law do you remember the law was given to the children of israel but were they able to keep the entire law not really so why is it that you are dragging the gentiles now and telling them to keep the law if they want to be believers of the lord jesus christ okay and he reiterates he or he um, reconfirms and he says but we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus christ we shall be saved in the same manner as they so how can we be saved by grace okay by grace so paul peter emphasizes grace now let's see who else is going to talk about this matter so when uh, peter was talking about this matter one good thing about the council in jerusalem is that they were silent they kept silent okay and they were listening so you know any any uh, group of people who have a willing heart to learn to uh, study god's word to bring out the truth from god's word follow it and live on those are the kind of people that god is looking for so the good thing about the council is they were willing to listen now if they were not willing to listen we would not have uh, the statement here in uh, uh, you know acts 15 12 which says the multitude kept silent and listened so they were willing to listen so they were listening okay what is paul saying peter just now talked about god bringing in the gentiles okay let's listen what else is there uh, to this matter so they listened this time again to barnabas and paul uh, they were also sharing remember they they went through the first missionary journey and they uh, reached out to so many people and among them were gentiles also so uh, you you remember when when they went initially um, they were called to the gentiles the jews did not listen but at that point they went ahead and started ministering to the gentiles so all these things actually happened in their journey and paul and barnabas started sharing these things with the council and said look god is not discriminating he is not saying that only jews are his people but he is open to work miracles do wonders even among the gentiles when god is doing that why are we trying to stop the work of god that is the question which um uh, paul and barnabas were saying or they are putting forth 
and trying to just enlighten the believe the multitude there and the set of elders we were trying to tell them let us not stop what god is doing with our own new uh, set of rules which we want to burden the gentiles with so now paul and barnabas spoke peter spoke and they are trying to uh, inform the the people saying this new teaching is wrong circumcision is not required for salvation of the gentiles if they believe they can also become children of god so the jews are listening okay and they are struggling to accept this matter it sounds very simple you know it's like how god told naaman you know you go dip in the water seven times you'll be healed but naaman was surprised he wanted god to say something more like oh give half your kingdom or something very very uh, difficult to do but it was as simple as going and dipping in the water seven times similarly you know salvation it was about faith it was about believing and not about following these traditions so the jews were little perplexed why did god make it so easy for the gentiles but here are the leaders trying to share with them the experiences one is experiences still now peter shared his experience paul shared his experience barnabas also shared his experience now there is one more leader in the church uh, which is james okay james the brother of jesus earlier when we were uh, in uh, i think it's acts 12 we saw how herod killed another james okay that's a different james this james is the brother of jesus who is now the leader among the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the jerusalem church so james gets up and he starts speaking and he says that whatever peter said just now you know you have heard uh, what he has said but also he quotes a scripture from the old testament Uh, and this is uh, i'll read it i'll read it for us he says after this i will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of david which has fallen down i will rebuild its ruins and i will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the lord even all the gentiles who are called by my name says the lord who does all these things so he is quoting the passage where god had promised to rebuild the tabernacle of david okay uh, and why is he quoting this because when god told through the prophet amos he uh, shared this word in that prophecy god had mentioned and said see towards the end of that passage it says even all the gentiles who are called by my name so what is god going to do god is going to bring people to himself including the gentiles so one i'll back up one verse before that it says so that the rest of mankind may seek the lord so why is god going to rebuild the tabernacle of david i won't go into the tabernacle of david because we already know we have studied about this in many courses in the bible college <laughs> but it is that form of worship you know that extravagant that committed that um, excellent form of worship where uh, david made god his priority his first priority okay in that way uh, god is going to rebuild that worship among the uh, people here on the earth and when he does that and we know that you know he will fulfill this in the church today so when he does that what can we expect people will come to christ and there is a mention of the gentiles being called by the name of god so james is reminding the people and saying what we are seeing happen among us it is nothing new it has already been prophesied god has already told us so <coughs> you know we must not stop the gentiles or like how peter said don't put extra burden on the gentile believers telling them to follow certain traditions so that's the point james is making now how is james making this point you see earlier experiences were shared god worked among the gentiles so let us accept them but james is quoting scripture 
so you know these are all ways in which and this is a very good way when we want to speak the truth of god's word and say look this is what the truth is it is good to share that from the word confirm it from the word and that is the pattern that james is using he's saying see amos had prophesied therefore it's very good for the gentiles to come to know god nothing new god is not doing anything which he did not tell us so from scripture and as pastors and leaders this is also something that we can learn to make a point through scripture you know don't make scripture say whatever uh, we want that's that's not how it is but whatever the scripture is saying we should know how to share that with the people and that's what james did to convince the people to persuade the people he went to scripture he pulled out the prophecy of amos and he declared it and said when the word of god says this why should we stop the gentiles why should we make more it make it more difficult for the gentiles to obey god so then he also adds and he says look therefore i judge that we should not trouble those from among the gentiles who are turning to god but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols so he says we will not stop them but how about we only look at some things which they are doing which is not right before god which is not right according to the word which makes them unholy so we can address those matters because uh somebody needs to tell them so he says we will not push things like circumcision because the word of god never says that one must be circumcised or follow any traditions to be saved so leave that aside here are certain things we will tell them one is abstain from things polluted by idols okay so if there is anything to do with idols you stay away from that second from sexual immorality and third from strangled things strangled from blood so it's possible that even the gentile the gentile believers you know they come from that background right of worshiping other gods uh, and not knowing about the holiness of uh, jehovah god so those practices which they were used to if uh, the leaders did not tell them that they were wrong you know it's probable that they continue with those practices and that is why the leaders decide that it will be better for us to <coughs> excuse me instruct them about these wrong things so don't do, don't uh, uh, have anything to do with the idols second is any kind of sexual immorality you please stay away from it and strangled animals right so, or strangled things uh, from blood it says so these are the only uh, if you want to call it you know some guidelines or uh commands that they give the gentile believers fine so now it is quite clear because james himself as a leader he has made this point and instructed that this is what we are going to do so after this discussion took place i am at verse 22 uh, we see that the apostles and elders with the whole church right uh yeah just a moment i think yeah oh yeah right correct we are at the right place so they together decide that uh, they will send two more people along with paul and barnabas to go back to antioch okay and they will go back to antioch with a clarification on this matter of circumcising the gentiles so they write out a letter and in that letter what do they write you know they write saying uh, and they greet not just the people in antioch but they are greeting people from syria and cilicia because remember those men from judea they had traveled all the way to teach this so they must have touched all these regions and that is why the clarification needed to go to all the regions you see how the apostolic works 
clarifying doctrine okay clarifying matters that relate to faith because if it is not clarified then what will happen it will affect the faith of the people it will uh, take people away from god so that is the reason you know they have to let the people know across these regions that what is going on is not at all correct so they write a letter <clears throat> see today uh, it, it's a lot easier you know we send out emails it's easy to publish an official letter but those days you know they still had a similar practice but they're trying to give out this letter and send it out through uh, some of the leaders paul barnabas and they are adding two more people to the team judas and silas uh, who will also go along and share what was decided so uh, we are told here uh, that um, they clarified okay they said something like since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your soul saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment so they are clarifying and they are saying look this new teaching which uh, came to you it's not scriptural and we never told the people who taught you we never told them to come and teach such things so uh it seemed good for them to uh you know send out people like barnabas and paul mm. and now they are adding you know judas and silas also to the uh to the work and they're saying that it seemed good to us that you know it uh, in fact uh, this i don't know which number it is but uh it says for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us so when they discussed as a council they came to a conclusion this conclusion was something that they were happy about so they are saying it seemed good to the holy spirit so obviously what they decided and what seemed good to them it was led by the holy spirit so this is also something we can remember that the decisions that we are making and especially you know when it comes to decisions for the church for the believers for the people of god what is the best decision now something that we can uh, uh, hold on to because it is there in scripture we feel good about it but it also they are saying felt good to the holy spirit so god should be happy about the decision so god was happy about this decision they were happy about the decision and what is the decision that we should not burden you with unnecessary things salvation is by grace however there are a few things which we will tell you to do and you please follow that that is abstain from things offered to idols from blood and things that are strangled from sexual immorality and that's it you know if you just follow and keep yourself pure that should be good enough your salvation is not going to get affected if you don't be circumcised so they clarified wrote this letter and now they are putting a uh, a stamp on you know paul barnabas judas and silas and telling that these people are going to uh, like we had a discussion with them they were part of this discussion they also know and they are bringing you this message so the matter was settled okay so that is the way in which the early church settled the doctrinal issue all right so any any questions about that any thoughts about that how these people went about settling a doctrinal issue think it's quite clear isn't it okay i'm assuming that uh, it is it's all fine so we'll just proceed so the matter about circumcision is settled now excuse me okay let's move forward now this team paul and barnabas they're coming back to antioch with the message after clarifying everything so when they come back to antioch we see that a multitude 
came together and uh, uh, when they read the letter they rejoiced over its encouragement so there were a lot of gentiles in the church it was a gentile church and uh, uh, you know i mean obviously there are jews as well but uh, there were gentiles and the gentiles uh, were very happy the people were very happy when they uh, saw that they don't have to follow the traditions so again you know earlier remember when there was an issue in um the jerusalem church where the food needed to be served to the widows the leaders dealt with it so wisely and after that we saw that the word of god was continuing to spread that uh, you know people were accepting god and all of that similarly now that the matter has been dealt with so wisely uh, by the council by the elders there is encouragement among the people okay so uh, the leaders are leaders have dealt with the matter very wisely and that is how it should be when we deal with matters wisely it causes encouragement it causes joy in the church and the believers can continue in their walk of faith now also remember that when the team came back from jerusalem uh, two additional people came together with paul and barnabas and they are judas and silas okay now judas and silas uh, the scriptures tell us that they were prophets so they came and in the antioch church uh, they brought their ministry and what does it do you know when the fivefold ministry offices they come and serve the body it strengthens so in verse 32 we see that they were exhorted and strengthened the believers were exhorted and strengthened uh, with the words with many words which judas and silas brought them and they stayed there for some time uh and they sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles so after this time of ministry by judas and silas also in the church of antioch for some time you know uh, uh, they were there but judas went back and silas stayed back okay now who's who's left in uh, antioch you have paul barnabas and silas and they continued they continued the ministry so primarily they were teaching they were preaching the word of god uh, and the work went on now talking about silas uh, you know silas obviously it, we have understood that he is a prophet we've also we will see later that you know he will continue in the missionary journeys uh and uh, it seems you know that uh, silas was the one who helped peter write his uh, epistle one of his epistles and uh, uh, he might have even helped paul you know write sometime uh, but he was a noted leader in the jerusalem church so that's a little bit about who is this silas you know you will have the question right so that is silas so these people silas paul and barnabas are in antioch they are continuing their uh, work and strengthening the church now what happens after some time paul and barnabas maybe the church was once again strengthened and um, uh, you know people are doing well now so paul and barnabas decide hey how about we go uh, and visit all the people whom we have ministered to till now okay in the first missionary journey you remember we saw a, a map right and and i told you about the first missionary journey let me quickly put that for us you can have a look yeah so let's refresh our memory let me know if you can see i'm just going to put the ha huh. can you see yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. you can see you can see it okay so there are some places here no 
can you see we said cypress go through cypress and uh, uh, we we saw all these names perga uh, uh, oh sorry initially it was pisidia pisidian antioch we said that then iconium then from iconium lystra uh, so they went about you know preaching the gen the jews did not accept so you know they were ministering to the gentiles um in certain places and then finally like in iconium there is a lot of opposition so they leave iconium go to lystra lystra one miracle happens uh, but uh, and you know the the people want to make them as gods uh, paul and barnabas but you know they say no don't do that so you remember all that happened right so lystra derby perga so all these places we are quite familiar with and that's where the uh, missionary journey actually happened okay so uh, let me just quickly show you another one Okay, this is the second missionary journey. Don't get all overwhelmed. We will go through it one by one. But I'm just showing you for your information. Okay, so now they are in Antioch. Can you see everyone? Yes, we can see, ma'am. Okay, okay, great, great. Okay, so basically they are in Antioch right now, and they are trying to. The idea which they got is let's go back, you know, to all those places, say, Derby, Lystra, Iconium, Antioch, and then we will see that apart from these places, this was the. These are the places of the first missionary journey, but they are going to go beyond. Okay, they are going to go to. other places as well so it will be they'll go off into macedonia this place called macedonia and i think you can see some of the uh, you know kind of the seaside places which are which are port cities and uh, uh, well connected with other cities so it's easy for them to go over there uh, spend some time so we'll see they'll go to uh, macedonia philippi is one place where they will go then from there the journey continues right uh, amphipolis apollonia then slowly they will come over here to thessalonica they'll go to beria right then achaia then athens corinth so the journey will go on like this ephesus so this is a longer journey which they are undertaking the initial journey was somewhat shorter only over here in this region okay of uh, i i think is it galatia yeah in this region but we are going to go beyond this region and move on to macedonia in the second missionary journey so that is like an overall picture but we will come back we will look at this um, map once again just just an idea for us so now they're coming up with the um uh what do you call they coming up with idea that we must go back let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the lord and see how they are doing so uh, uh class are you able to uh, listen to me and is my video i feel like my video is stuck yeah are you all there uh is yes, my video I'm stuck yes oh okay not sure why that's happening just a moment let me switch it off switch it on hmm yeah again it is stuck i don't know the connection is fine okay anyway it doesn't matter uh, as long as you can hear me i think it's okay uh, so so that is the plan 
to uh, go and you notice you know their heart uh, which is to see how the believers are doing you know that's a true pastoral heart that's a true apostolic heart now if we just plant churches and forget about them uh, you know it it is it's a at least it's not the biblical way of taking care of churches look at the heart of paul and barnabas they did the work some believers came to know the lord now what happened to them are they continuing in the right teachings are they still holding on to the faith uh, you know and are they uh, growing stronger in the lord these are all questions which they were concerned about and they really cared they deeply cared for the believers in all the cities where they had ministered so they don't want to leave them and abandon them but go back and check you know what is their spiritual health like is there any help which is required from us so that is their heart and they want to go and visit them now while planning this trip you know you, we usually plan our trip uh, okay what are we going to do uh, what are the subjects we are going to teach uh, who are the people who can go with us how much time are we going to spend there so we kind of think about all these things now you have uh, barnabas who decides that he wants to take john mark with him you remember john mark we said that john mark uh, when the first missionary journey started he was with paul and barnabas but he immediately right after i think paphos he decided to go back to jerusalem okay so it's that same john mark barnabas is saying how about you know we take him again with us on the journey but paul he gets upset he says he uh, that no we cannot take john mark with us um uh, because he departed from them while in pamphylia and he he did not go and do the work along with them so in this we are able to see the fact that we are co laborers co workers uh, in the kingdom of god in the uh, church of god but based on our personalities you know it's possible that we disagree with one another so a disagreement is taking place between who barnabas and paul we know about the personality of barnabas you know barnabas is a very accommodating person how do we know that he we read earlier when we talked about the early church we read that he was a levite he was very generous you know he brought um, uh, resources to the church when they wanted to distribute things to people and later on we saw when the jerusalem uh, apostles they were not willing to uh, um, entertain paul he was the one who first went and said no you can trust this man that he is truly a believer now so you see that he had a very generous a very uh, accommodating a very friendly kind of a personality okay that is barnabas for us what about paul we know that paul comes from a background where he is he he talks about himself he says i'm a pharisee of pharisees meaning he was very uh, well learned and uh, we also notice that he was passionate focused hard working you know it was more about the task he was so passionate that that's the only thing that he thought about so it's possible that paul because of uh, the way mark had left them earlier in the first missionary journey paul because of his personality felt that hey this uh, man you know john mark he is not capable to uh, do any kind of ministry together with us okay because how careless he left us and he was not willing to trust john mark now on the matter of john mark unfortunately between paul and barnabas what is happening we are told that became a sharp contention meaning they disagreed strongly how strongly to the extent where they parted from one another okay so sad we don't know suppose this contention did not happen uh, what would have happened to uh, the missionary journeys paul would have taken barnabas along with him 
because this quarrel happened he left behind uh you know or rather he left barnabas from his team now barnabas took mark and he sailed to cyprus but paul decided to choose somebody else who is that somebody else silas okay silas the prophet he was also with them at that time so paul decides okay fine i don't want john mark if you want john mark you take him and uh, he let barnabas and john mark become one team and go on their way paul chose silas and he went on his way now when they had to go again on the missionary journey earlier uh, the church had blessed these people and sent them on the trip now again you know they are blessing uh, both these teams and sending them on their trip now we don't read too much about barnabas's missionary journey but we only read about paul's missionary journey in the rest of the book of acts so that is how it happens and we will uh, look at it and we notice here that as they are going through the different regions syria and cilicia they are strengthening the churches so i've already showed you the map you know the different cities where they had gone so all those places they are encouraging the believers they are strengthening them and going forward in the journey so at this point let's just take a break class we'll come back and we will uh, study the rest thank you